what's going on guys so i just wanted to bring you guys this little uh, review and unboxing of the gigabyte b550m s2h motherboard um the difference between the s2h and the ds3h is that this one here has two memory or two memory dims versus four on the ds3h motherboard um that and among other things but those are the most outstanding ones um yeah here's your back plate no cushion just a simple back plate two sata cables one at a 90 degree angle there this one and i'm assuming the rest of the stuff is underneath here let's see yep and as usual your kind of a motherboard layout here your driver cd which you shouldn't use uh, you should go to the website and download the latest drivers there now let's take a closer look at the motherboard and um, the reason why i chose this motherboard the reason why I went and bought it in the first place is because I know that there this one here because it only has two memory dim slots um, it has better how do I say this better memory signaling which means that um, you can take this pretty high you can take the memory pretty high on this um, this motherboard actually on the website it says that it supports up to 5,000 megahertz um, it's not like you're going to be able to hit those speeds anyway with uh, Ryzen and have it stable or have any meaningful uh, performance because you're limited by the Infinity Fabric and your memory controller and so on. So um, we don't have yet a, an Agisa update to be able to utilize uh, high Infinity Fabric to support these speeds here. But what that means, having uh, this being able to hit 5000 megahertz, it means that you can actually overclock lower speed memory, for example, 2400, and you may be able to take it all the way up to 3600 megahertz because it has better signaling. Uh, also, um, just overall better memory overclocking, like, you know, your timings and so forth. So that's a really nice thing. Uh, but anyway, let's um, just kind of cover some of the most obvious things. Here's your 8-pin connector for your CPU. Now, this one here has a funny VRM. This is only, as you can see there, only on the CPU VRM. You get a heatsink, nothing for your SOC. Um, but uh, there's, these are supposed to be really good quality MOSFETs, so they don't, um, you know, they can get away without having a, a heatsink basically up there on the SOC. But anyway, this is a five plus three phase VRM and it's uh, controlled by the ISL229004 controller. Um, so yeah, it's used, it's the same thing that they're using on the uh, DS3H motherboard. So yeah, you're basically getting the same type of VRM and uh, five plus three faces that's enough to run a uh, quad core six core or eight core CPU I wouldn't recommend this motherboard for a 12 core or 16 core processor because it's just not built for that uh, you're going to see this board this VRM heavily throttle your CPU your 12 core 16 core CPU if you try to do that. So anyway, here is your CPU fan header um, Like I said 5000 megahertz on your memory, which is really nice 24 pin Power supply or motherboard power connector here and you get a total of four SATA ports SATA 6 Another system fan header down here You get also USB 3.2 a USB 3.2 port here uh, you guys you get also um, USB 2.0 here got your clear CMOS jumper or yeah uh, header there and down here you have your um, LEDs for like your you know your Ryzen uh, uh, CPU coolers if they support 
LED. So here's your audio front panel connector. And also here, let's see, where is your, well, don't tell me the, this is this. Oh, sorry, this is not, this is not your, this is not a USB port. This is actually your front panel connector here. Um, and this is a USB. You're only a USB 2.0 port that you get. So front panel, USB, LED, audio, front panel audio. And your audio cap, audio capacitors here. Um, and it's isolated as you can see there. So yeah, you also get a PCI uh, 4.0 slot here. You get uh, two PCIe um, one times one and your M.2 generation four. So uh, yeah, it's connected to your CPU. You know, not much I can say about that. Also system fan right here, system fan, system fan header. Um, yeah, okay, so I think that pretty much covers that. And here is your rear AIO, two USB 2.0 ports, legacy USB, mouse and keyboard, VGA, uh, DVI, HDMI. You get a USB 3.2 port here, and this is for uh, BIOS flashback. You can fla flash your BIOS. Uh, without having uh, CPU installed, so that's a pretty neat feature there. You can read more on that on the manual or on the website. Plus, you get two more USB 3.2 ports, uh, gigabit Ethernet, and your audio out. So, yeah, that's the layout there. Um, looking at the back of the motherboard, um, nothing special here, just the, yeah, you know, what you would expect to see. So, yeah, and it's got that. Um, light or dark brown um, PCB color to it so yeah all right so now let's take a look at the BIOS and uh, see what this little board uh, can do or what the BIOS looks like only thing I have to say is that as you can see there <laughs> one of these SATA ports is being blocked by the graphics card so UB minus uh, two SATA ports, yep, because the other two, if you have a double slot graphics card um, or a long graphics card like this old one here is, you'll be blocking those other two SATA ports there. So keep that in mind. And under the hood, it's the R7-5800X CPU. Alright, so everything is plugged in. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. There we go. Unfortunately, there are no postcodes or post LED lights with this board. All right, guys, so here we are in the BIOS. And as you can see, right out of the box, this one came with um, BIOS F3. Um, I think there's a new BIOS for this motherboard, so I'm gonna make sure that we update that when I get into Windows. And here you are, yeah, 5800X. So let's load up the um, advanced tweaking. And as you can see, is your typical gigabyte BIOS. Um, and this, uh, this right here, I do appreciate. Okay, how simple it is for um, to set up your fan curves and whatnot. So that's really neat. System info. You know, your booting setup um, but the juicy part is right here I'm not gonna be doing any CPU overclocking or anything like that uh, at the moment I just want to enable my XMP profile all right let's try let's see hmm. um, yeah we'll enable the XMP profile we'll take this to 46 uh, we'll leave this on um, yeah, auto because it really makes no difference uh, past uh, 30 to 100 megahertz. So we'll just leave that on auto. We'll try on auto. If that doesn't work, we'll come back and uh, adjust that. And the memory timings, we want to uh, manually adjust these. So we'll go with um, about 20. Oops. 
Nope, that's not what I want. Oops. At 20, and then we'll go to 24, 24, 24. And now we're not looking at performance, we're just, um, or stability or anything like that. We're not aiming for that. We're just, um, I'm just trying to show um, the frequency that this little board can push if my RAM here allows me to to do that. Um, we'll try, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's, let's go up. No, let's leave that on auto. Let's see, let's see what the board does with those settings there. Um, our SOC voltage, we're gonna do 1.5. Oh, nope, that's way too high. 0.05, yep. We don't wanna kill this thing. Let's do one point. There. Um, leave those alone in this one. We want 1.5 volts on our memory. Um, and I think that'll do it we could do further tweaking let's see no we'll leave that alone um and see if it um if we can handle this like it wants to boot and it does hmm. if we could only get an Agisa update man oh that would be so nice an Agisa update that allows us to run these speeds on the Ryzen system stable um, yeah because at 4600 megahertz right there um, so yeah the little board's got a lot of capability um, I don't know if I could do 5,000 uh, this kit I don't know um, I could try but it'll be insane um, lose timing so I think I'll just leave it here I think I'm happy at 4600 because I know that this kit here is not the best at overclocking but I just wanted to kind of showcase what this little board can do um, the memory overclocking capability on this thing is insane uh, one more thing that I just wanted to talk about is that um, the you know how you have the logic why would i get a two dim slot motherboard versus a um versus a four dim or a, why would i get a two dim slot versus a four dim um because you're thinking about you know upgradability um you know what the way the way memory chips are working nowadays uh, the way they were um, how do you say advancing uh, you can easily purchase a, a dual rank kit of memory 32 gigabytes for a very reasonable price so having two dims is not all you know it's not the end of the world um, if you're playing video games and this is my point if you're a gamer you really should be you having to use more than 16 gigabytes of RAM and if you are needing more than 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, you're doing um, some video editing you know one not something that requires a lot of memory then you wouldn't be running um, perhaps a 3600 or a, or a 5600 CPU uh, at that point you probably be running a different motherboard anyway something with a more um, just more features uh, because you're just at a different level you're doing video editing you know you require a better CPU more memory just more more of everything so uh, but if you're just gaming a board like this for the price being able to run an eight an, uh, an eight core processor um, at 4600 megahertz, hopefully cross fingers that AMD re does release an Agisa, um, Agisa BIOS that allows us to use um, or to stabilize the Infinity Fabric on AMD. That would be fantastic, man, because this little board here at this price has so much potential, 
So don't be fooled by the higher prices. Uh, if all you're doing is gaming, some video editing, you know, nothing too extreme, don't waste your money. This will be a great little option for you. Uh, if you want to do some mild overclocking on your CPU, which I don't recommend that you do anyway on AMD because uh, Precision Boost Precision Boost already does a great job at overclocking your CPU, so I would just leave that alone. But I would focus on the memory because that's where your that's where Ryzen shines when it's got fast memory, fast memory timings. You unlock so much potential. So for that reason, for that reason alone. Um, I made this video and I wanted to talk about this board here in particular because um, there's so much potential here in this little cheap board, <laughs> believe it or not, and the quality is a gigabyte quality. I mean, you still get the same warranty, um, so great warranty on it. So um, yeah, you know, tighten up your timings, take your, your, your uh, frequency up to 3800 megahertz and just take some time, do some tweaking out um, and you'll be happy you did. So uh, 5600X CPU, 5800X CPU would be great on this board. Uh, like I said, I don't recommend anything else because the VRM is just not aim at that class of processors, if you know what I mean. It's not that it's a bad VRM, it's just not. If, you, if you're needing a 12 core CPU or a 16 core CPU, you're doing something else, you know. So of course you're gonna get a better VRM, better features and whatnot. So anyway, not to go around in circles here, but you get the point. So yeah, 4600, you know, <laughs> great little board. I highly recommend it for a gamer, you know, uh, casual user or even just some advanced users that wants to do a little bit of overclocking. Um, it's a fun little board. I think you'll have uh, a lot of fun with it. I just don't have the time on this video to show you everything that uh, it's full potential. But um, yeah, I'm going to leave it here. I'm not going to mumble around you know, any further. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content coming up. Uh, if you have any tips, any more question, any questions, or you know any suggestions, please leave it down, leave it down in the comment section, and I'm going to respond to you. Uh, you guys take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.